Of course, what we're going to do next is, uh, this is a time that's kind of exciting for everyone online. And these, what we're going to have time for now is question and answer. And that you people are on It's going to be a time where you, everyone in the audience, can start asking questions. It can, it can be questions or comments. Comments are fine too. Like you can say, hey, Sky, I like your hair. And I'd be like, thank you very much. It could be anything, right? This is a time, it's going to be live and interactive, and I hope that everyone here can also uh, be able to just be free. You're behind, a, you're behind a screen. All I know is your name, and all I know is your question, and I just want to help everyone out the best that I can. So right now, we're going to have a time, for probably for like the next 20 minutes, 15 to 20 minutes, we're going to have time of question and answer. So start typing away, and I hope that uh, you guys will have some good question and answers. Okay. All right, so uh, let's see. We got some questions already coming up. Okay. All right, so uh, we have a question and the name. Where, what's the name on this? I don't see the name. It is Jane. Okay, cool. Jane, I'm not sure which platform it is, but Jane, uh, the question you're giving right now is uh, how... Uh, have you experienced true love? Have you, oh, how have you experienced true love in your life? And it looks like it's direct at me. Okay, right? I'm assuming it's for me, right? It's referring to me, right? So he says, Sky, how have you experienced true love in your life? Okay. So uh, I want to kind of uh, explain this a little bit. Like when I say true love, I do believe everyone's experienced true love, honestly. Like everyone's experienced. It's just that since they didn't practice that love, it's almost like that tr you think it's not true love anymore, right? When you first meet that person and you fall in love with someone and you start talking to them and this, this, and this, or you, and we're talking about friends, right? We're not talking just about lovers, but like friends too. You have friends you really love, and then as you grew closer and closer, some incident happens, and then you're no longer friends anymore. And I don't think that that's not, you haven't actually experienced true love. That's not it. It's that you are actually experiencing real love, but the problem is, is when people are, their minds are wrong about thinking that love is a feeling or when their minds are wrong that they don't know that they have to practice the skill of love, this is when they feel, oh no, I don't love them anymore, so, oh, I guess this is not true love, right? And what I understand is, uh, it took me a long time, right? It took me a very, very long time for me to understand and realize this, right? That Love is something that you have to practice, okay? So I want, I want you guys to make sure that, you know, even more than you finding true love, I'm not saying that you've never found it, but you have. It's just that when you don't practice it, you can't stay together. Why? The love is constantly growing and your love has to grow too. Like you practice the patience and the kindness and the not self-seeking, the not envious and the one that always forgives, right? We have to be those people because, you know, later on we can, we can even have an entire session just on forgiveness, right? And forgiveness is a tough thing, especially when there's betrayal in love, right? So uh, that's, uh, that's a great question. Uh, that's changing. Um, let's see another one here. From, oh, here we go. From Kuala Lumpur. This is uh, in Malaysia. Uh, the name, okay, this is a uh, Chinese name, so forgive me if I ruin it. Jia Xiang. Jia Xiang. Jia Xiang. Okay, I might have sworn in Chinese. I don't know, but that's what it says. Jia Xiang. Okay, so the question now is, uh, the question says, why do people seek love in the world but feel empty? Still feel empty. Okay, so here it is. It says, um, why do people seek love in the world but still feel empty? Uh, and the interesting thing is, uh, this is something that I talked about in the first bread talk. And in the first bread talk, uh, what we need to understand is in life, there are things that we hunger for and there are things that we, really, that we really want. And of course, the biggest hunger we have is love itself, right? Uh, one of the things that I am a true believer in is that if it is really, really love, it never ends, right? It just, it, it'll never end, right? So why do people seek love in the world but still feel empty? And what usually happens in the world is it doesn't really last in two ways. Either that person stops loving me or I stop loving that person, right? And because of that, there's emptiness because the love was supposed to be forever. 
The love was supposed to be a young guy. The love, the expectation that you had was so high, but the difference is it broke in this world. And that's why uh, I, I, I'm going I'm to say to a lot of people here is, this is why a lot of people actually out something more spiritual. Because in something spiritual like believing in a God, there is no break, right? It is constant, right? That regardless, you know, people in the world live and then they die. But actually when it comes to, uh, when it's something more spiritual, like say relationship with God, it is something that is constant and something that is always there, right? And you know, that's why, especially for today's uh, talk, I really want to make sure that everyone understood it, okay? So uh, let's take a look at uh, another question from... A Gordon, a Gordon, a Gordon says, I thought love was just physical. Okay, that's interesting, right? Love is just physical. And the answer is true and false, because love is physical, but we gotta also determine what does it mean that, what does it mean it's physical? Like, what does it mean it's physical, okay? Well, let's talk about what physical love is, and I'm sure that most people in their heads when talk physical love is like, physical love is me touching your arm. Ah, that's love. And that's love. If you, if you love someone, you touch their arm, you actually feel something, right? Holding hands. And of course, you can go into more and more loving actions. Okay. Now, if it was just physical, think about this example, okay? If love was just physical, then the people who would have the most love in the world would be prostitutes. Right? If love was just a physical thing, then the the most in the world are prostitutes. The most happiest and loving people would be prostitutes. But if love was just Oops, sorry, I turned it on, on, on mute. I turned it on mute by mistake, sorry. Right? So the, the example I gave is, uh, I'm not sure where it, uh, where it muted, but uh, the, the example I gave is, if love was just physical, then prostitutes would be the most loved people. And if it was just physical, then you could say that your parents don't really love you because there's nothing physical between you. There's no, nothing sexual, right? But the interesting thing about your mom or your dad is, your mom and your dad love you so much, there's nothing sexual, but yet they would still die for you, right? So when you get love, one of the things you have to understand is love is, like this, the, the physical part of love is a part of love, but it is not love itself. It's not the only thing. It's not the biggest thing about love, right? And I hope that, you know, if you start thinking about it, almost all these questions will be answered when you start to think about those three points that I made. Okay, let's go to another question. Okay, next question here. It says, uh, we're going to Indonesia. Okay, Indonesia. Uh, Ari Anto in Indonesia. And the question is, what if, what if somebody who doesn't, oh, uh, what if you love someone who doesn't love you back or people you love keep backstabbing you for no personal gain? Okay. So there's two questions. Let's start with the first one, okay? Let's break the first one down. What if somebody you love doesn't love you back, okay? Uh, I do have an entire session just on love itself, but I'm going to tell you one, one part about loving someone and they don't love you back, okay? Now, when you love someone or when love happens, right? I'm, let me tell you this. Have you, do you guys believe in love at first sight? That when you look at someone, you're like, <gasps> and they look at you like, <gasps> and then you're like, yeah, and then everything's slow motion and you're running towards each other and then you like, something like it doesn't happen like there's no like electricity i love you i love you right there's nothing like that right it's not like even in a relationship when we're married it's not like at the exact same time like you know what i'm thinking I think it is. let's say together after three one two three i love you i don't want to marry you ah right it doesn't happen it doesn't happen. It's crazy that love is like love at first sight. You might be attracted in the beginning and you might love, really, really love someone. It's true. You, you love someone. But what you understand is in the beginning, there is always one sided love in the beginning. Always. And there's something very interesting because this is also in the scriptures when it talks about love. Uh, I believe it's in 4 verse 19. You don't have to turn to it, but it basically is a short verse. It says, We love God because God loved us first. Which means something to first. In any relationship of friendship or anything else, like even your parents, 
they love you first with the risk that you're not going to love them back. That's what love is. No matter what, love doesn't come back. That's why love is a risk. In the beginning, love is a risk. And of course, so if, it's, if you're in the beginning of a relationship with someone you really love, they don't love you back, it's normal. Why? Because they don't know you and, and you know, usually love comes from one person first. And then eventually someone will make a decision whether to love you back or not. Now, if you're really deep into a relationship and they still don't love you back, this is when people move to someone else, right? So uh, not getting loved back it's a normal thing in the beginning of a relationship because usually one person likes first, usually, right? And that's why I, I, in, if I give a lecture just on love, the one of the main points is love is a risk. You love putting your heart out to that person, being very vulnerable without any guarantees that this person is going to love you back. Right? And that's why it's something that, you know, that we have to understand as we go through life. Uh, the second point of this, I hope that helps you, but the second point of the, the second question is, what about people you love keep stab stabbing you for no personal gain? For no personal gain. So there's no real reason for it. And uh, one thing I do know is, is that uh, there is always a reason. There's always a reason why people do it. And there might not be personal gain, but they could have a lot of personal hurt. Right? Uh, I believe that love where you don't have enough or have more uh, becomes one of the biggest reasons why people uh, end up hurting each other. Like people don't, didn't have enough love when they were younger or people don't have enough love at home from their parents or from their friends anyways and they end up hurting each other as a defense mechanism. So uh, I'm not sure what the exact situation is but the one thing I would do as someone who loves someone but keeps backstabbing and hurting me is I would sit down and talk to them and figure out what is the issue we're really dealing with right now, right? And that's something that matters more because if you really love them, uh, you want to find out why they're, they're, they're acting in a certain way, right? And sometimes it'll be because, you know, maybe it could be they are just inherently wicked. It's possible. It's very possible. Or in most cases, there is something that they're going through in life or something that they went through that we, we don't know about. And what happens is we begin to stop loving them even though they're the ones actually hurting the most, that they need love or anything else. So I hope that, uh, I know it doesn't answer your question, but I would probably need a little bit more information in this. Okay, let's go all the way down to, um, let's go down to, let's go down to the Philippines. Rose Arnaldo. Rose Arnaldo. Says, what inspiring word can you say to those people who feel so lacking and struggling to give their lover a satisfying love, but still they want to make it work out and raise it in a higher level? Okay, I'm going to read this again. It's a, very, it's a very long sentence. What inspiring words? Okay, so I know I have to give inspiring words right now, which is a lot of pressure. Inspiring words. Okay. I'm sorry. I start thinking about this now, right? Uh, say to people who feel lacking. Okay. Lacking and struggling to give their, okay. So, they're, so someone is, feels lacking and they struggle to give like satisfying love, but they still want to make it work out and raise it to a higher level. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure if these words are inspiring. It's very, you know, Rose, I'll have to talk to you after because it's very burdensome that you want me to inspire you. But I'll tell you uh, what advice I can give you, okay? So the inspiring word I'll give you here is this. Uh, uh, Part of the reasons why we might feel lacking is not so much that we don't love or we're not giving satisfying enough love, right? That's, you know, like a lot of things we talk about, especially, uh, especially through all uh, the different talks that I give, the first thing that has to change in people's hearts and their minds is actually their perception of love or perception of themselves. Uh, I know a lot of people, uh, I've been to 23 countries now, and I talk to a lot of people, and the interesting thing is uh, people don't have the proper expectation for themselves. Because if I were to say who's lacking, uh, I think everyone in the internet world would put their hands up. Like very few people would say, I'm not lacking. Come on, everything, right? If I even asked, like in this room, there's like 10 people in here. If I asked, put, hey, put your hands up if you're lacking. Do you know how many people would put their hands up? 100%, right? 100%, right? The thing that, that you have to understand about love itself is this. Love, part of love is understanding. It's understanding of self and others, which means this. Like I'll give you an example. If, you know, like, you know, 
uh, the Bible that says that, you know, if someone hits you in the face and turn your cheek, right? You know, or love each other, right? And if someone hits you in the face, turn your cheek, right? So imagine what's happening. Would you be like, <laughs> and you turn your other cheek, and they're going to slap you on the other cheek, and you're like, what? That's so crazy, right? And it's interesting because even though we teach this, right, and even though, like, say, for me, like, I'm, I've done missions work, I've, I've Even though I'm a pastor and even though I'm someone who's, uh, yeah, someone who's, you know, always giving advice to people, one of the things I have to do, I have to look at is myself to understand others, which means I understand myself as in, I am trying really hard. Like, I am. And to be honest, there are some things that I'm really, like, I suck so bad at. But I try. And if I understand that about myself really well, then what happens? then it's very, very easy for me to understand about other people, right? Now, why doesn't that happen? It's because sometimes we separate ourselves from other people and so we can't connect it. For instance, for instance, say we talked about someone backstabbing you. Okay, let's say someone backstabs you, right? And how do you feel? <gasps> how dare they? <gasps> and then what do most people do is they say something back, right? But you! How dare you? Oh my goodness. How dare you say that when you're someone like this and you're someone who said this and you look at you, look at the way you dress, right? So we have, you know, the moment someone says something bad to us, we're like, <gasps> and then pow, we hit them back. Interesting thing is, when you say something bad to someone, we expect them to understand. It's really weird, right? When they say, hey, you said this. I'm angry at you. Oh, please don't be angry. You know, I was, I was just going through a really rough time. And, you know, my parents just divorced and my dog died. And I got a bad grades and this. And it's really interesting because when you make the mistake, you wish that they would understand you. And if they did understand your situation, they wouldn't be so upset. But the contradiction is when they say something to you, you're like, please, the Incredible Hulk is like Hulk smash. You start smashing everything, right? And what, thing, what has to happen is there must, there, you've got to have that connection between yourself and others, right? Like for me too, waking up early, I try my best for, I know that every successful person is waking up like 4 or 5 a.m. I try my best every day. But guess what? It's been 22 years I've been doing this and it's still not easy. And if I can connect that to other people, I'm not going to be like, hey dude, uh, you woke up at 5.30? Oh my gosh, you're pathetic. Right? You're, a, you're, a, you're so lacking, you're a waste of my time. Like, you wouldn't do that. Because once I connect it, I'm like, you know what? I went through that too. And it took me a while to get to it. Right? And part of love is understanding. But not just understanding others. Hard part to understand others is you have to understand yourself first before you can understand others. Uh, and you know, we have to be, you know, feel lacking. But honestly, everyone is lacking. Uh, the only time I would actually try more is when, if I'm not even putting effort to stop being lacking, right? Or I'm going to be honest with you too, because I'm understanding myself, is sometimes you try something so hard and you're just, you're still bad. It just still, it still doesn't work, right? And you still feel lacking, like, oh man, what is it? And honestly, for myself too, I will give up at a certain point, but I understand why. Because I tried and nothing happened, right? And I, I do think that one of the healthy things about ourselves, ourselves too, you really have to, part of love is understanding, but not just other people. The best and greatest way to understand other people is through your own life. Because generally speaking, we all go through the same things. Like generally speaking, we all do. And this is something I hope that everyone can start to, to figure out about, about themselves also, okay? Uh, there's a lot of questions, so I'm going to... Um, uh, let's see. South Korea. Wow. Someone from South Korea named Sean. That sounds really odd. I'd be expecting a Korean name. Sean McMillan in South Korea. Okay. In English, we just have one word for love, but I am guessing some people read the Bible in more than just English. Do they use more than one word in Chinese, Japanese, or Korean? I know Greek has a couple different words. It's true, right? And uh, I think one thing, uh, it's, it's a really, really good question because, especially in English, English is very simplified. Like, we use the word love, or like, we use certain, like, the same words for like 50 different situations. We do. Like, say the word like, awesome. 
Or like, no, that's bad. Let's use the word, oh, that's wicked, wicked, okay? So when something is really bad, you're like, man, that guy's wicked. Meaning they're really bad, evil, right? And then sometimes you'd be like, oh, wicked, dude, which means it's so good. And you're like, ooh, man, oh, wicked. And you're like kind of wicked. <laughs> it's like it could be evil. It could be like even in English, the, the limitations of English is what? The limitation of English, the reason why we're doing this on video is because in English, the, the vocabulary is so limited. You have to explain everything. You have to see my facial expression, right? Because when I say I love you, no, no. When I say you're good looking, I could be like, oh, you're so good looking. I could be like, yeah, you're good looking. It's, it's a completely different thing. Right? My body language and the way that I am uh, plays a big role in my communication with other people. And like, I'm not sure, like, um, it's true, like, I guess it's not a question, it's more of a statement that Sean is giving, uh, but it's a very, very good, uh, very good uh, analysis, I guess, of what he sees is, yeah, it's true. Because even in Greek, there are, there's like three words for love, right? In, in Korean, there is a word for love, and then there's, you know, then we could talk about loving more, right? In Chinese, I'm not sure about Chinese and Japanese, uh, but I do think that in English there is a limitation, and this is why more than anything else, uh, in English you need to explain it a lot more than other languages. Yeah, and that's, that's, a, re that's a really, really good observation. Sean, he's, he's obviously uh, American. I think so. Yeah, he's American, right? And in South Korea, which means that he probably observes even more of it because he sees it in another country. Something else that we can look at too. I'm sure some of you can chime in uh, how many different words of love is there in Tagalog, right? Or in Chinese and Japanese and other things like this. Okay, uh, let's see. Let's take just one or two more questions because, you know, we're, we're basically down to the time. In Singapore, Deborah. Deborah. Okay. Deborah, in Singapore, I find, I'm, I'm asking, I'm answering more questions in Singapore mainly because we're in Singapore, right? So, uh, I find it difficult to love God who is invisible compared to the physical beings that I can see. How can I practice to love God the most beyond the physical beings that I see? Oh, this is a great question, okay? So, um, interesting, interestingly enough, uh, the concept that we're looking at here is because I can't see God, he's invisible, it's hard for me to love him. But the interesting th thing that we also have to understand is in the world, the same thing is happening. People are now meeting each other over the internet. They do not touch. They do not see. They're just like right in the past, they were just writing emails to each other. They're on messenger. You know, there, it's not like today where you have video chatting. In the past, back in my old days, it was just chatting and it took like 20 seconds for that thing to get to the other side. But people were falling in love with each other over the internet, right? So even in this world, the interesting thing is, is we are falling in love with each other without that physical looking or, or seeing. It's just actually interaction. Now, the next point I want to give to you about this is very interesting, okay? It says, uh, Deborah says that, how can I practice to love God the most beyond the physical beings that I see? So I'm going to give you this, exa this example I give all the time. It's about how do we fall in love with each other? Okay. Obviously, we don't fall in love with each other by doing physical love, or else, or else there would never be a one night stand. Because if that was the way to fall in love, then one night stands would make you fall in love with someone. But someone who does a one night stand keeps doing one night stands. So it's not about that physical love. Okay. How do you fall in love with each other? There's one key point I want you to understand about love. If okay, Deborah, I'm assuming you're a girl, Deborah, right? It's got to be a girl, right? So Deborah comes in. Debra comes in, and let's just say you and I, Debra, are sitting at a table, and some strange dude, and he's pretty good looking, right? Some stranger comes in, and he says, hey, I love you. Let's get married. Sounds like Trump a little bit, right? Hey, <laughs> sorry, sorry, right? <laughs> right? <laughs> My love for you is huge, right? So how would you react? And he'll be like, what the? And why would you react so weird if some stranger walks in and says, I love you, I want to marry you? Because you're like, I don't know him. Right? It's true. It's so, it doesn't matter how good looking they are. It is creepy if someone comes in and does that. Now, let's just say the same person comes in, but let's just say that person's your friend, just a regular friend, acquaintance. And he says, hey, Deborah, uh, like, I love you and I want to marry you. And you look at them and you be like, shut up. What? I can't sit on the seat, right? And interesting thing is, you wouldn't be as creeped out, but you'd be like, yeah, shut up. You're just joking. Come on, let's just eat together. Now, let's pretend that same person walks in and it's your best friend. 
And he says the same thing. Deborah, I'd love to marry you. What would you say? You'd probably be like, wow, I never thought about this. You know, let's really, let's explore and think about this first. And then finally, what if that same person is your lover who you've been with for many years and you know each other's parents and that person says, I love you, I want to marry you. What would you say? You'd probably be like, yes, oh my gosh, I've been waiting. Now, it's the same person. From the, from the stranger all the way to the lover, what's the biggest difference? The difference is how much you know them. Love requires knowing, and you can only love as much as you know. If I'm a friend, then I can only love as much as a friend. If I'm a best friend, I love as much as a best friend. If I'm a lover, I love as much as a lover. And it all, the, the whole thing it depends upon is how much do you know? And if that's the case, when it comes to loving someone invisible, like over the internet, or when, we, when Deborah's question is about God, then loving God, the number one thing that matters more than anything else is not whether you can hold God's hand or not whether you can kiss him or hug him. In the beginning, the most important part about love is knowing each other, right? And that's why I'll tell you, uh, if you want to fall in love with an invisible God, you have to know him through, you know, you have to know him. How do you know him? And one of the best ways that I would say is, you know, partly is, is studying the words of God or reading the Bible. Why? Because... The Bible is a text, but it's actually God himself. Why? Think about this. If your husband sends you a text message, do you think it's just words or do you feel it? When your husband says, I can't live, I can't live without you, I love you. So, no, he's not going to say it like that, right? So he's like, I can't live without you, I love you so much, you're, you're, my, you're my everything kind of thing. Then what happens is you're moving. But they're just letters. But they're not just letters. It's an expression of the person who loves you. It's from their heart. And that's why I moved. And that's why even... Well, when people write books, you can be inspired. Why? Because it's from them, if you know who it's from. Okay? So that's why for you, uh, falling in love with an invisible God has to do with knowing God. Right? It's the same thing as over the internet. The only thing you're doing over the internet is chatting each other. You're just getting to know each other, and you begin to fall in love with each other. It's the exact same thing, the exact same concept. Okay? Very, very good question. Okay. So, um, oh, last question. Just last question because five minutes left. It says, uh, from Gordon in New Zealand. It says, wow, New Zealand here too. Uh, hey, Sky. Hey, Gordon. Do you think that you can regain love after losing it with someone that you once loved so much and how? Uh, that's a very, very good question. Uh, and it's possible. It's very, very possible. Like, for number one is, uh, we have to be under the assumption that both of you still want to love each other. Because remember, love is both ways. So that's the assumption that we have to have is, yeah, that other person still loves you. So that's the first assumption. Uh, second thing is, uh, you have to figure out why you lost your love. Right? You have to figure that out. Right? And there's, there's umpteen reasons. Like A lot of times, um, people will try to fall in love without fixing what stopped the love to happen in the first place. Because there could have been a problem. There could have been something that caused you to not want to love anymore, right? So one of the biggest problems people have is they try again without solving the issue, and basically it ends up, you end up breaking up again anyways, right? So it is a good question, but the how is, first, you have to reflect on that relationship and figure out what was the cause. If it's me, if it's them, if it's something that happened in my life that caused me, causes me to react very negatively to this, Right? So uh, I would suggest number one is uh, you have to really think about what caused it to break. Right? What really caused it to break? And when you can start figuring that out, and you can actually work on it together with the person, you know, with that person. And when you the reason why to work on it together is because you're both, both going to get deal with because you're in a relationship, right? You love so much. You're both going to deal with it anyways, and it's better for them to know anyways too so that you can work on it together. So I, I couldn't give you like exact, the exact reason or how, but depending on your situation, uh, there's multiple different ways that you can fall in love again. And of course, uh, like what I said before, is knowing each other again or knowing each other more than you did before, more deeply. 
but that's for another time. So that is the end of the Q&A. Uh, there are oh, five, six more questions or, or they keep popping up, but that's okay. We'll talk about it. Uh, we'll, we'll have, you know, we can have another session for Q&A the next time we have this bread talk. I hope everyone had a wonderful time that we learned something new. And also those of you um, who like to learn more, you can, uh, you can sign up for the many things that we have on uh, the Facebook and the Instagram site. Thank you so much for inviting me. We'll see you again on the next bread talk.